Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. This is part two of Carved in Flesh by Sean Kona Ross. Hit the annotation on the screen if you missed the first part. It's fairly short. That was very deliberate so I was having a lot of trouble with my internet recently and uh, uploading a really long video was just out of the question so I had to make it a bit shorter. But we're back to normal now. Things seem to have become much more stable. So we can go back to regular lengths. So the first map of this pack was very, very open. Uh, the combat was kind of sparse, had a little bit of a, an arena at the end. But map two is where things really take off. It gets a lot more difficult. Again, this is on hard skill. And it offers a pretty meaty challenge on hard. You do have to... Uh, be very very careful. I think it's mainly due to the fact there's just a lot of new enemies that you have to learn. I get, I get caught out a lot by these ogres because they fire so many grenades at once. You're just not really expecting it. This is where Kona's kind of very very trademark uh, design comes out. So this is the new Shambler I, was, I mentioned in part one, kind of a lava Shambler. He's really nasty because even if you do the Shambler dance you're going to take damage because he does kind of like a, a fire AoE with his hands when he lunges at you. So you really want to take them out very very quickly. Luckily in this mod they're never really used with kind of anything else, they're always kind of single encounters. It could have been really really nasty if kind of piled in with a bunch of other stuff as well. So yeah, this is very, very classic Kona architecture. I love the way that in, in Kona's maps, it seems that instead of curving out and away from the player, all the kind of buttresses and walls curve inwards towards the player. It makes a very, very oppressive environment. It feels like it's almost trying to crush you in certain places. It's, a, it's really, really cool. It's something that's kind of always stood out in Kona's maps. There's very, very harsh angles everywhere. That corner's kind of interesting, we'll come back to it in a moment. So we hit this button here and it says a secret passage has opened. And it's actually in that little alcove I just mentioned. There's nothing really drawing you in there, I was kind of a little bit confused here trying to work out where this secret passage might be. It turns out I took a wrong turn, didn't check back down here because this actually opens up. Not really sure how much I like that, perhaps a, a locked door or something with a mechanism that that button operates would be better. Something to help draw the player around a little bit. just seems a little bit random that a hole in the wall magically appears when you hit that button. It's, uh, it's a bit odd. So this is the positron beam, that uh, overpowered grenade launcher variant I was talking about in part one. It's essentially a hit scan rocket launcher. There's no travel time. You just have to be very, very good with your aim. If you've ever used the railgun from the Quake 2 or Quake 3, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's basically one of those with an explosion at the end. <laughs> now there are two or three secrets in this map, I can't remember which, and I couldn't find any of them. I looked for ages and I just couldn't find them. So 
something I've always had a bit of a problem with in Kona maps is that I can never find the secrets. <laughs> he hides them really, really well. The two I found in the first map were all kind of uh, texture alignment, like obvious texture alignment issues there that lead to secrets. I'm never really a fan of that kind of uh, signposting for secrets because it's just not really obvious enough. Um, it's a case of if the player notices that then they'll find a secret. I, I much prefer secrets there. Are there secrets hidden in plain sight? Like perhaps there's a, a wall with a, a hole in it that you can see a secret through. And then the gameplay is actually searching the environment and uh, trying to find a way in there. I think that's uh, a much better way to handle secrets. Otherwise you end up with players kind of pixel hunting around the map trying to find these slightly hidden walls and it just ends up getting really frustrating after a while. I'm not saying that every secret ever has to has to have plain visuals to denote it. That there's lots of ways you can do secrets that aren't hidden in plain sight that don't require pixel hunting. So yeah, not really a fan of those. So the textures here are again more uh, quick three textures and uh, fac two textures, I think. I'm not quite sure where these kind of ornate, kind of bluish textures are from. I, again, I never really played the the fac game, so it might might be from there. But I'm not sure. I quite like them though; they're very nice. Something else I noticed about the visuals in this map while playing through is that there's not a lot of symmetry in the environments. It's, it obviously is there from time to time, it's hard to avoid, but Kona has this style that everything feels unique, every corridor has kind of a unique walls and uh, outcroppings that just make makes the environments feel very very strange and alien at times, which I really really enjoy. Kind of instances all over this map where the walls have different shapes on either side and even things like stairs and uh, ramps and things like that are kind of at odd angles. I mean, it really helps uh, promote that oppressive atmosphere that I talked about earlier. It's great because it ends up feeling not particularly man-made. It's obviously like stone and brickwork here and everything like that but it feels extremely alien. Which, uh, really really helps improve the atmosphere of the map I think. It just feels like a structure that humans wouldn't build even though it's built from uh, fairly familiar materials. I really like that. So these are the rock knights that I was talking a little bit about in part one. They are really nasty if they hit you with that that kind of cone AoE they do with those rock pieces, it's very very nasty. So we saw this room from below when we picked up the silver key. Now we get to fight the guardian to the gold key. Now this guy is a little bit of a bullet sponge and for what I can tell he's not really that dangerous. He, he teleports around a bit doesn't really seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. Occasionally he'll fire lightning, which can actually hurt a fair, a fair amount. That's about the only dangerous thing he does. <laughs> I mean, maybe the intent here was to have him teleport directly next to you and then hit you with the sword, which could have been quite nasty, but it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> and this video wouldn't be complete without a custom derfo moment, so there you go. <laughs> so we'll just spin ahead I think. 
to the gold key door. And the stairs is a great example of the symmetry thing, so it kind of s squishes into a, a, a narrow entryway at the end. It just feels very, very evil. I was wondering if there was maybe a secret around one of those uh, little alcoves there, but I couldn't see anything. So that is map two. And the final map that we're going to look at right now is the arena at the very, very end. we can stock up on all sorts of ammo and supplies before we enter the arena here. I love the design of the doors to enter, it's, it's really really cool. I've never quite seen anything like it. Really interesting texture choice here as well. And this, this arena map looks beautiful, oh my god it does. Nicely designed as well, you've got the two kind of buttresses sticking out of the walls here which you can use to break line of sight which is really important in Quake. There's a lot of opportunity here for infighting, as you can see. <laughs> in fact, the ammo can actually get a little bit tight towards the end, uh, so it's actually recommended to use a lot of infighting here. My terrible aim is not helping here with these guys. <laughs> so we get a couple of different waves of enemies with a little bit of a gap between them, which is always nice. I think some arena fights that I've played in the past, they do the waves of enemies correctly, but there's no real gap between waves at times which can really really help to give you a bit of a breather perhaps go around and collect some supplies between waves which is really really important here's a little bit of a gap and you can hit that button to proceed We get some more Hell Knights and another one of those bullet sponge enemies appears as well. Luckily these are uh, these are lava knights are really trigger happy and it's really easy to get them to uh to hit the other guy and start an in fight. And finally, in the very last room of the map, we get the rocket launcher. It's actually kind of interesting that you get it so late. It's such an iconic weapon in Quake. And generally, you're kind of given it... We can actually make a lot of use of it throughout the mod or map that you're playing. Now, I really like the use of the... Uh, the Queen Fiends here, it's much better than in the first map where it was kind of super easy to just kind of kite it around and kill it. This is better but still not perfect. I like the fact there's two of them and I really like the fact that there were lots of those little fiends around them when they spawned. But I think once the little fiends die it would have been nice to keep teleporting in more enemies I think just to, to actually add some danger to those Queen Fiends because they're still very very easy to kill like that. And this room is beautiful as well. 
Again, I love the fact that the non-symmetry of it. There's a couple of walls which have uh, symmetrical features, but a lot of the the walls around the arena are actually completely custom all the way around, which is really, really nice. So now we have to defeat the final boss. Now, th this arena is tougher because while there is a, a line of sight blocker that you can use here up the stairs, it's it's a lot more tricky to pull off. And there's also a, a small clipping issue on the stairs where you can kind of hop up and down in place very briefly and that can get you killed extremely fast. <laughs> so generally you're kind of doing this circuit around here to kind of get rid of the homing balls that he's sending at you. But every time you go up the stairs uh, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, one wrong move you can get caught on the clipping on the stairs and uh, have about eight of these homing balls hit you in the ass. Just not really what you want. <laughs> yeah, this area is lovely. Big fan. But this map must draw to a close, I'm afraid. So this was Carved in Flesh by Kona. You can find it on Quadicted. All the links are in the description below this video, as always. I really recommend it, it's a lot of fun to play. And I will see you next time guys. Hopefully we'll have a, another episode of Final Draft coming out at the end of the weekend. I can get off my arse and finish it, so look forward to that. I'll see you soon.